Now, if you totally forgot everything about this lesson, that's okay. Uh, we're really just doing more of the substitution we've already talked about. But for some reason, uh, these tend to be the ones that students get stuck on, so we're going to practice a little bit more. Okay. So, I, you know, just to give you the idea of what I'm talking about, if we were to start like this, can you find a derivative and its uh, function? Do you remember? Uh, substitution. Yeah, so substitution, the goal was always to pair up a function with its derivative. We're, we're undoing the chain rule when we do substitution. So we need a function and its derivative. Can you find one in the first example? So top or bottom, what would you use as function, what would you use as derivative? Bottom. Bottom's the function, top is the, the uh, derivative. So if I make this substitution... Then um, du is 3x squared plus 1 dx. So I can make that change right there. It's all ready to make the change. So this will become the integral for 1 over u du. And 1 over u, hopefully you recognize that. That'll be natural log of um, absolute value u plus a constant. Now, um, u to us, that was x cubed plus x. So we'll finish off by putting it back in. Sorry? Oh. OK. Um, so take a look at the next one. What do you think? tan x, okay? So in this case, the pattern, the only difference here that you're seeing is you're going to have the derivative on the top and the function on the bottom, and then you could go directly like this. So again, if you totally don't, you know, if nothing's stuck in this lesson, you're doing the substitution that we did from the previous lessons that we worked on. But the goal here is for you to recognize that you can make a quick one and see that natural log is what you're looking for. So here, I can see that's the derivative, that's the function. So this is just going to become the natural log of tan x plus a constant. If you took the derivative, it would be 1 over tan x times the derivative of tan x, which is secant squared x. Okay, so when you get to these next ones, do you remember what's what we did to get around the sort of little problem we have now? Uh, three outside. Yeah, so here, if you, if you made your substitution, right, and, and the nice part about lo your life in, in this calculus class is there really only is the one strategy to get around being stuck. So here, if you tried to make a substitution, even if you didn't know that you were on the right track, you'd get there. So du dx would be 3. So du is 3 dx's, which means if I multiply in here by 3, how do I balance it out? Yeah, I need a 1 over 3 outside. Right. So now, if you look, the top is a derivative, the bottom is the function. So I could re just rewrite this as 1 third natural log absolute value 3x plus 2. Now, it's certainly not a race. If you do the full substitution on this, um, it's going to work out exactly the same, and you may find that better. But uh, I'll let you try the next one all by yourself, see which way you prefer doing it right now. I'll walk through this the long way, just as a review of substitution. Okay, so now what I need to do in order to get the rest of this through, I'll make my substitution. So I'll have 1 half the integral of 1 over u 
du. So that'll be 1 half the natural log of u plus a constant. So 1 half the natural log of x squared plus 2x plus a constant. Okay. Now, um, in this case, I'll show you a couple other ways that you might uh, use a bit of creativity to, to figure out what your antiderivative is. And that's uh, something similar to what we've talked about when you have a, a denominator, like splitting it into different fractions. But in, in its current form, you can't really pair them up. I don't, in this example here, I don't see a function and a derivative. But what I can try and do is separate those fractions. And one way I could go about it is with long division, which is uh, probably something you haven't done for a little while. But uh, I'll jog your memory here. If I have x squared plus x plus 1, and I'm going to divide it into x squared plus 1, does this vaguely look familiar? Ah, uh, yes. And I bet it was horrible, awful, and boring then, too. So the trick is you line up the most significant digits. So x squared to x squared, that means all I would need is a 1 to make them the same. If I multiplied it by 1, so one group of x squared plus 1 would look like this. And when I subtract it, what I'll have, x squared minus x squared is gone. x minus nothing is x. And 1 minus 1 is nothing. So there's an x left over. And we call that the remainder, right? So it goes in 1 with remainder x. And the relationship, if you forget the way it works, it's the same as with numbers. Like if I go 27 and I divide it by 5, it's going to give me 5 with remainder 2. So the way I could rewrite this is 27 divided by 5 is 5 times 5 plus 2. Five groups of 5, five whole groups, and two left over. So that's the way I'll rewrite this one here is x squared plus x plus 1 divided by x squared plus 1. I get one whole group plus um, a remainder of x. So this will be... So the connection, um, I guess perhaps I could put another step in here. Some of you, I think, could see it, but some of you might not. So let me move this. You'd have, um, this would be 27 divided by 5 and 5 plus 2 out of 5. So if I multiplied through by, that's what it was. If I multiplied everybody here by 5, then I get this thing back here. There's a couple ways, but anyways, this is the one we're using in, uh, in uh, our question to rewrite it. And that's the one I'm going to do my integral on. So I'll rewrite it here. So this will be the same thing as the integral of 1 plus x over x squared plus 1. And now I can see a, a pair. So I'm going to actually split this one more time. Because what I'm missing here is if I make, say, let u equal x squared plus 1, then du is 2x dx. So here I'm going to put a 2x, and I need a 1 half in front. So I would end up with x plus the integral, sorry, 1 half the integral of 1 over u du. So x plus 1 half natural log u plus a constant. And to us, that u is worth x squared plus 1. 
And in this case, you wouldn't need absolute value brackets because that is always positive. So we could rewrite that as just x plus 1 half natural log x squared plus 1. Okay. So that's uh, about as creative as you'd need to be if, if you ran out of uh, things to do, is think about how you could split up the fraction. Uh, in this case, substitution and a natural log come into play. Um, if you look at what we have to start, again, you probably might say to yourself, well, if I don't really know where to begin, I'm going to need to make a substitution here. So can anybody looking at this think about what we did in substitution? What might you, you know, how could you maybe make this simpler? What substitution could you make? Not everybody at once. Uh, we could expand x plus 1. Uh, however, in this case, I'm not sure that's going to get us farther. Um, well, it probably will. It'll just take us longer. Um, the way we actually have it um, is not bad. It's just nothing. That's okay. Um, let's instead get rid of this x plus 1. And the reason I'm targeting that is if for me personally, if I have to choose between a monomial and a binomial denominator, I'd always pick the monomial. It's always easier to split up fractions if you got something on the, just one thing on the bottom. So that's why I'm, I'm doing this one here. I'm going to say that u equal x plus 1. And in this case, du is just the same thing as dx. So I can make my substitution here. I'll have 2x over u squared du. But now I have that other x. Do you remember how we handled this before? Yeah, so we can solve for x up here. x is equal to u minus 1 using the same equation that we did before. So then I can make my substitution as 2 times u minus 1 over u squared. So this will be 2u over u squared minus 2. And now the reason again why I prefer that is now I can pull this fraction apart. I still have a fraction, but there's only one thing on the bottom. I can do this and say that's like 2u over u squared. Take away 2 over u squared du. And if I tidy that up a little bit more, I'll pull the 2 out front. There's 1 on top, 2 on the bottom, so it'll be 1 over u du. And then over here, um, I'll rewrite that as u to the negative 2. All I need is power rule to do that. So this one still has a natural log right there, but we still use our substitution technique to get there, to get a simpler version. So this would be 2 natural log of u. And if I go one higher, it's going to be u to the negative 1 divided by negative 1 and a constant. So when I'm done, I'll have 2 natural log. And this is what we made our substitution for, x plus 1. And then take away, well, actually, I have two negatives here. So I'm actually adding 2 over x plus 1 and a constant. So that'll be the antiderivative. Um, it'd be pretty hard to see that, you know, judging where we started if you didn't make a substitution. Okay. So this time we're going to take a look at tangent, and the hint I'm giving you is how could you do the tangent? Well, you're probably going to need to think about it as sine over cosine. You probably never thought about it maybe till right now, but there's something very convenient about sine divided by cosine. Negative sine. What's the relationship in calculus between sine and cosine? Yeah, so you have a function and a derivative here already. Um, so think about how you could come up with, see if you can figure it out. What will the antiderivative of tan x be? All 
right. So here we have, um, well, the only thing funny about this situation is the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we could use that pair. And the derivative of sine is cosine. We could use that pair. So if you guess wrong here, you have a 50-50 shot. It just means you're going to see pretty quickly. Here's what will happen if you make this substitution. Let u equal sine of x. You don't need to write this part down because this is uh, going to lead us astray. So cos x dx is what I get. And this is not the same thing as what would be left over because what I'd have is dx here over cos x, right? That's what would be left. So it's the pieces are there, but they're not the way I need them. So I know I haven't substituted properly because I should get the function times dx, not the function uh, dx divided by the function. So this one, that wasn't the good choice to make here. We'll flip, it, flip that around. Only took about a minute there to get us the way we wanted it to. And substitute for cos x. So I have to introduce a negative to this problem because I need a negative sine x dx. So I'll go negative, negative sine x dx over cos x. And now I can make my substitutions. So this will be the integral of du over u. And that's just natural log u. OK, so that's how you would integrate tangent. Now, the other ones are simpler, except, or sorry, similar, not simpler. Um, those ones there have a little bit of a trick to them. So uh, if you're trying to find cosecant or secant's antiderivative, you do end up with uh, a little bit of creativity in the answer. But uh, cotangent is almost identical to tangent in terms of finding it. So those six trig uh, functions, you do need to know. Uh, these ones, you know, you, by now, those ones should haunt you in your sleep. You probably know those very well. But uh, the other ones aren't obvious, so you probably need to um, add those to your list of things that uh, should be at the tip of your, your calculus brain. Okay, so now if we want to find the average value for the tangent from 0 to pi over 4, um, we can use what we know about the antiderivative here. It'll be 1 over pi over 4 minus nothing times the integral of... tan x dx so here we'll have 4 over pi times the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of tan x dx and we've worked this one out 4 over pi times negative natural log. So we'll be looking at the cosine at pi over 4. And natural log of the cosine at 0. OK. So cosine of 0, do you remember what that is? Yeah, it's 1. Natural log of 1, yeah, it's a 0. So there's nothing left in that piece. Um, cosine pi over 4, anybody remember what that is? Square root of 2. Very close. It's going to be 1 over the square root of 2. So I would have 4 over pi. And this will be times negative natural log and 1 over root 2. Now, through the magic of logarithms, I could also call that natural log. If I take the negative inside, it makes this exponent negative 1. 
So if the exponent is negative 1, that flipped it. So I'm back to root 2. And that exponent, what's the exponent for a square root again? Yeah, 1 half. So I can pull that out front, and I would have 4 over pi times 1 half the natural log of 2. So I don't think I can cut this down anymore. 2 natural log, 2 over pi natural log 2. That would be the uh, average value of tangent from 0 to pi over 4. Okay, so we are clearly going to run out of time here, um, which is a little bit unfortunate. But um, I suppose what we can do, I'll, I'll get these ones set up just so you can see what uh, they would have been. 1 plus tangent squared x, does anybody recognize that? It's a secant, yeah. So this one here would be square root of secant squared x dx. So really what we're looking at here is from 0 to pi over 4 of the secant of x dx. Now, um, the next one looks really scary. However, maybe a small rewrite could help us work it out. 1 over x times 1 over natural log x dx. Does anybody see a function and a derivative now? Yes. Yeah, so there's, there's my derivative. There's my function. So I know what substitution I'm going to make. This would be let u equal natural log of x. du is 1 over x dx. And that's what I have here, 1 over x dx. Okay, so I would be able to continue this through with substitution. However, that's a bit of a trick that you would need to maybe get a little prepping on before you see it. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll hope that those, I mean, at this point, you have secant here. And you should be able to make that substitution. Okay, so we may run out of time here, but uh, let's, let's try and work this out. Um, so solving a differential equation means trying to find the function it began with. And so if this is the derivative, what I'm going to try and do is integrate 2x over x squared minus 9. And in that case, I can see a function and a derivative. So this is going to be um, du over u, which is natural log of u some constant. So natural log of x squared minus 9 plus a constant. And this is the solving part that makes a differential equation a little bit different, is we don't know what the constant was. That's where we have to use this information to figure it out. So my antiderivative, I would know the value of my antiderivative is 4 when I use the value of 0 in that function. So that'll tell me here that I've got um, 4 equals natural log of 9, because I take its absolute value, plus the constant. So here my constant would be 4 minus natural log of 9. So the actual solution, this is like every possible solution, but because I have this initial information, I know that my function f of x had to be natural log x squared minus 9 plus 4 minus natural log of 9. Okay, so I apologize for having to rush the end of that there, but um, we'll talk more about this a little later.